My name's the Reverend Michael Brawley. I'm the priest in charge or vicar of this parish of Gullworthy, a small village in West Devon. I'm Mary Ann Furs and I live in Gullworthy and I'm church warden here. And we're just a small community of very happy, friendly Church of England people. We have installed a biomass boiler, a wood pellet boiler, in a pod in the little shed outside the back of the church. The Tamar Valley contacted us and said, would we like to investigate the possibility of using a renewable heat source in common? At that time, our own system of heating, our storage heaters were very worn out and actually it was beginning to lead to deterioration of the building. The walls were becoming damp and mouldy. And so this was a very good opportunity for us to actually renew our system as well at the same time as linking with the community organisations either side of us and actually adopting a very uh, ethical source source of uh, energy for heating the building. Our church architect, who's another important person who's been involved in the project all along, her constant advice is that churches should be uh, maintained in heating continually. Uh, it's better for the fabric of the building to have that rather than for a building to lie cold for six days of the week and then to get a sudden blast of heating in preparation for a Sunday morning. And this wood pellet boiler certainly does allow us to keep the temperature uh, and the heating going at a minimal level during the week and then we can sort of you know turn up the hob on the oven as it were for Sunday mornings. And we hadn't got the space to have wood pellet, uh, wood chips and so we had to go for wood pellets. The suggested scheme was for a wood chip boiler to be situated in the school heating hot water which would then be pumped underground in pipes through to the church and then onwards to the parish hall. Regrettably the parish hall withdrew from the scheme at an early stage leaving the school and the church to work together which we did on detailed planning for a couple of years until on the eve of the pipework being laid regrettably the school pulled out. That left the church needing to face its own heating future and we had, I remember, an agonising council meeting where we had to decide do we go for an oil-fired boiler to uh, pump hot water into the radiator system that we got into the church or do we go for a renewable source of energy. For any parish church in the Church of England, any major work has to be sanctioned and approved by the diocese in which they're situated. And our advice from our experience is to involve that committee, those specialists, that expertise, as early in the process as possible. Get them on side, get them to come and have a look, talk with them, learn from them if they've got any ways to tweak the plans at all, so that then they become friends in the process and not foes. The diocese are enormously helpful. The committee are the ones that advise you on to, as to whether you can apply for a faculty. The faculty is the planning permission and is given by the Chancellor. Dowson is a formal document, but you have to go through the DAC first and get them to say, you may apply, your, your application is adequate and likely to be passed. Because the pod was going to be near a listed building. We had to have council planning permission as well, but there was no problem about that. They stipulated that if we ceased to use it, we'd have to take it away. If it hadn't been a listed building, there would have been no problem. We could have popped a wooden shed up in the garden, no problem. But um, it came, went through very easily. We had feasibility study done by an installer and it all looked very good on paper and we decided to go ahead. We were going to have a big boiler in the school and they pulled out. We'd already put our radiators in and were all ready to row. So we had to start thinking again and we went it alone and renegotiated grants. In about six months later, we had the boiler in up and running. We had to put a completely new radiator system in basically whatever form of heating other than electrical we used. The radiators were in the order of 26,000, well we managed that. Then to put in a biomass boiler totaled out in the end at 27,000, 27 and a half. 
all of which was paid for by grants and donations. In other words, 50% was paid for by grants and 50% we did ourselves. It was just a couple of days to put the boiler in place and to put the shed around it. Trickiest thing being liaising between the builders and the installers. Getting the whole thing up and running, in fact, took from May till May till November, October. Boilers um, from Austria, and it's a Guntomatic 45 kilowatt wood pellet boiler. It consists of a monstrous great firebox and a tower beside it with the pellets in, and that's kept full from a canvas hopper which holds four tons that's in the shed beside the boiler and the, an auger switches on every now and then and pumps pellets from the hopper into the holding tower. And it's all incredibly automatic and run by computer and you just press a button, switch it on. And then in the vestry, there's a programmer and there's also a thermostat. I program it from inside the church and it just switches on and off automatically. Pellets are made of sawdust, pure and simple, nothing added. Delivery is the main problem that you need to have a supplier within reach because otherwise the actual delivery costs, quite apart from the cost of the pellets, becomes a significant factor. We might ask how have the church community responded to this. Well, they're now warm for a start. They're also rather secretly chuffed that we have this rather impressive boiler which has drawn a certain amount of uh, attention and interest and the fact that it's actually placed Gullworthy on the map a bit and actually people are proud to be part of something which has pioneered the way. We have got quite a high profile. We've had several articles in various productions and I have been to the odd conference. Um, so we're flavour of the month as far as um, biomass boilers is concerned, and they're rather proud of that. The system has been up and running for about 18 months now, so it's still relatively early days for getting used to the system and getting the right balance and the right temperatures and so on. So we're still working our way through exactly how the cost savings are made as against uh, the use of um, uh, other heating sources which were used previously. The initial soundings are that actually we're not losing out at all and in fact you know, we're possibly quids up um, by using this particular source of energy. We would very much like to have PV panels, especially as we want to insulate the roof and we would re-slate at the same time and I believe you can use PV slates and that would be absolutely brilliant. The project has raised, if you like, our green antennae quite considerably as a church council. We are mindful, now that we've got this renewable heat source, that we must be looking to preserve the heat and be very good uh, stewards, if you like, of it. You need to keep, keep going, keep researching until you find somebody who thinks your way. And you do need to plug the community aspect you know, what is this doing for the community? How many people, how many different people use your church and your building? And what difference is it going to make? And if you can produce a feasible answer to that, you're home and dry. <laughs>